Okay, it says the polar coordinates of a point are 2 pi over 3 and 2. Okay, um, I'm going to take a hint from the um, pi, what these are supposed to be. I guess, you know, it could have been clear telling you explicitly that this is referring to angle theta and this is referring to radius r. And <laughs> I'm quite giving you enough. Um, it's not spelling everything out. Um, so that's why I'm doing this to spell it out. So when it says polar coordinates, it's uh, referring to one of the two ways to refer to the um, point in a, um, in a two dimensional axis. So one of them are Cartesian coordinates. That would be the reference to X and Y coordinates that you might feel more familiar with. And polar coordinates would be the, um, I guess the way it's written here, it would be R and theta. So, uh, so let me uh, draw this, um, draw a representation of this point. And that's what the hint was getting at saying, uh, so there are formulas that you could use, but maybe you don't have it memorized. And I, I would actually recommend even if you have it memorized to draw the picture to make sure that you didn't mismemorize them. Um, so let me draw the picture. Uh, here's my coordinate axis. I'm gonna show my bias towards the Cartesian coordinate by drawing the X, Y axis. And even the polar coordinates are defined in reference to these axis. So uh, even when you're using polar coordinates, you will be drawing them anyway. And in a trigonometric class, you might remember these being referred to with the quadrants, one, two, three, and four. Those are all good to keep in mind. Um, so it says uh, 2 pi over 3. So I have some angles memorized. <laughs> this is one of these things that these quadrants are good for. Uh, when you are within the first quadrant, this angle here, it goes from 0 to the angle of 90 degrees or in radians that corresponds to pi over 2. And then the quadrant 2 will be from pi over 2 all the way to pi. Uh, half of a circle, a uh, full circle being 2 pi. So um, so I'm looking at here 2 pi over 3, 2 over 3 is bigger than 1 half. So I'm looking at a point that's within my uh, second quadrant. So that's where I'm going to draw my uh, point uh, somewhere here. No. So, no. so I'll just say this angle here, this theta, is what that uh, theta is referring to. And that's uh, my 2 pi over 3. And r refers to this uh, red, uh, quote unquote, radius, because we are imagining there being a circle uh, that uh, these points are all on. And, um, and r refers to this uh, distance from the origin distance from the origin. So in the polar, polar coordinate system, you specify a single point in your plane by first specifying what circle of what radius that point could be, and then specifying the angular direction. So polar coordinate specifies the distance and direction, which sometimes we make use of in its a kind of natural um, physical way to describe a position of something without needing to refer to a coordinate axis. So, although here, <laughs> the convention we have is that this theta is always the angle from the positive x axis. So it's not really the case that you can get away with the not defined coordinate axis. So anyways, uh, so that's our point. And once you have drawn this picture, I think you have uh, enough information to, without knowing any, additional formulas uh, beyond the SOCATOA that I think uh, one of your first uh, geometry classes cover. Uh, with uh, no relationship beyond the SOCATOA, you can figure out what formulas you need. So I start by drawing my triangle. And for that triangle, I want this distance to be the hypotenuse. And I want the triangle to be a right triangle. So I'm going to drop down a leg here so that I have an x 
uh, I have a right triangle here. And for my Cartesian coordinates, the x coordinate, I'm looking at this distance here. And for my y coordinate, I'm looking at this distance here. So I'm looking at the parameters of this right triangle. I have the hypotenuse. Oh, I'm going to need to figure out this angle. Uh, let me call it phi. And once I know the magnitudes of these legs, then I will need to uh, put them in with the correct signs. So having drawn the point and located it in the correct quadrant, I can see that my x coordinate will have a minus sign in front of it. So, so okay, uh, let me go through here. So uh, let me start out with my x coordinate. Um, so I see that uh, in reference to this angle phi, this side is an adjacent side. So I need to use ka or cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse or spelling it out. Cosine of angle phi is the adjacent x1 over the hypotenuse r. Or solving this for x, uh, x1 is r times cosine of phi. And uh, this is where I do have to caution you a little bit because um, you are going to see this quite commonly that whenever you have x, x, com x component, x whatever, that um, you, you use a cosine to get it. So people build up this automatic association of x with a cosine, and uh, I want to caution you away from that. You are going to see situations in the coming weeks where you are referring to x, coordinate, x component of something, x component of a force, and it's not going to be associated with a cosine, it's going to be associated with sine. And there isn't really a simple rule I can give. Um, the only rule I can give you that won't be uh, misleading from time to time is you should draw the triangle. You should draw the triangle and locate the angle of interest, then you won't have make any mistakes. So, so okay, uh, that's going to be my x-coordinate. For my y-coordinate, um, so in reference to this angle again, it's going to be the opposite side. So I'm going to be used so. <laughs> Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Or writing out the relationship, sine of phi is equal to y1 over r, or um, solving for y1, y1 is r sine of phi. Oh, and uh, uh, looking at this drawing here, I can get that phi is 180 degree minus, or sorry, no. I'm using radians, so let me stick with the radians. Phi is pi minus 2 pi over 3, or uh, doing that in my head, pi over 3. Oh, I think I can do this in my head. Uh, so, you know, uh, uh, if you don't have this memorized, that's fine. But I happen to have uh, many of the special triangles memorized. So um, I'm drawing this triangle here with uh, one um, side having angle of pi over 3. Then this is going to be pi over 2. And this angle is going to be pi over 6. Or the in terms of degrees, 30 degrees. Uh, 90 degrees and uh, 60 degrees. With these triangles, I do remember that if one side is R, then the uh, this shorter leg is going to be R over 2. And this longer leg is going to be um, uh, <laughs> square root of 3, R over 2. If you have this memorized, great. Um, or you can use scientific calculator to just to do the trig functions. It's a cosine of this angle that I'm dealing with. So um, so the uh, the r cosine of phi is gonna be this one. <laughs> what reminded me was looking at this figure. This is a phi. So adjacent. Yeah. So x component is gonna be one. Um, 2 divided by 2, and the y component is going to be 1.73. So, you know, don't do these things too quickly. Take your time. <laughs> Make sure you don't mix up the angles. Um, yeah, I guess this is a rare case where drawing the figure confused me rather than clarifying things. So uh, let me plug that in, and then we'll move on to the next question. So I think I can remember that. Minus 1, uh, 1.73. Good. Um, 
so this is the quick review of the polar coordinates and the Cartesian coordinates. Um, and in this class, uh, we won't have you, there won't be many questions that have you do this uh, explicit conversion between the two coordinate systems, but, but a lot of the calculation tasks that you do, particularly in two-dimensional questions, could involve that in the background.